Hi, my lovelies, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Amy, and I'm a cruelty-free makeup enthusiast. So today, I am in a super special space right now. My two friends, Tina and Evan, are actually opening a store of oddities and magic and fun here in Connecticut, and they have allowed me to use their beautiful space to film. This is actually the Beauty and the Beast room that's part of their store, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I have some of these birch trees behind me, and I just figured I would share this with you. I will put all the details of their store, which opens later this month, in the description down below. But in the meantime, it's been a long time. How are you all doing? We're gonna do a get ready with me, so let's just get started. I'll try to talk about all the products that I'm using. I'll also bring you in a little bit so you can kind of see what I am doing. The first thing that I'm gonna use is the new Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. And I've been using this over the past couple of weeks. And I do have to say, it is quite nice, especially going into the summer months. So how is everything going on with you? I feel like it's been just insane very busy. It's been very hard for me to kind of keep up with videos. And I know it can be very hard to sometimes kind of keep a following when you're not as consistent, which I have not been. So I'm going to try to be a bit better about it this summer. We shall see. Sometimes it's hard for me to film in the summertime just because it gets so hot and everything. And then of course there's just more plans and things going on in the summertime. So, but we will try. I'm putting on the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I got this in a BoxyCharm a few months ago. I've since canceled BoxyCharm, but I do have to say I really, really love this foundation. I think it just gives such a beautiful finish to the skin. So can you believe all the news that's going on in the beauty space? Because I'm having a hard time believing it. I do have to admit um, there has been just so much going on brands have been closing and I'm like I don't know what to think about this so I don't know what you guys have been thinking of I saw that bite has closed down they're still keeping their lip lab which is pretty cool but I do think it's kind of heartbreaking that they are closing I thought they had some really good products I know that it's really hard when you rebrand you kind of reformulate all this stuff and I know that's what what bite had done and I don't think it was necessarily a fail. I just think that some of the products that they had that were holy grails, they changed too much of them. And I think they just kind of lost their existing customer base from that. So it's unfortunate because their lipsticks were so nice. And I have a bunch of them. I bought a bunch before they kind of went off Sephora. So if you can still get your hands on their lip products, I still think that they're bomb. Their bullet lipsticks are really beautiful. They're opaque, super smooth. They just fill in all those lines and they just make your lips look so beautiful. What I'm going to go into next is actually from Salt New York. I have not played with their products on camera before and this is an indie brand and they do all beautiful cream products and I know a lot of people put their depotted shadows in these. I've got this beautiful taupey case right here and I just think it's such a great idea for travel. I'm going to go in and do a little bit of contouring and we'll do some blush and highlight as well. I think I'm going to go into the deeper shade first. Another thing that I wanted to talk to everyone about was just this kind of concept of things going on with brands having downfalls. And this may be not a really popular opinion. I just noticed that a lot of people have been talking about brands that are either they think they're going to have their downfall or the brands have already had a downfall. Maybe it's because they produce what may be considered boring products, especially to us makeup enthusiasts. And I do have to say that sometimes I look at things and I'm like, oh, this is so boring, this release. Why are they releasing this? This is quite silly. But then sometimes I try to think of myself, if I was just a regular makeup consumer, someone who just wore a little bit to like go out with or just wear to work and something that could be dependable. I think some of these brands that we might be considered boring now, um, or maybe they're just kind of sleepy, I don't know if I would consider them having a downfall. So I do have to disagree with some of my peers here on YouTube about that, just because I, I honestly think that uh, you don't have to be um, 
constantly producing like crazy colors and brand new color stories because the established customer base will continue to shop from you. So if I think of brands like, I think Urban Decay is a perfect example, right? So Urban Decay has, you know, I don't know, they just, they haven't been putting out the most interesting of products. Once upon a time, they were a very innovative brand and not so much anymore. Yeah, they are kind of sleepy, but I do have to say some of their face products and even some of their eyeshadows for some people out there, that's like their ride or die and they'll continue wearing that stuff. So I know that while the naked palettes are kind of like old news, I kind of understand the established customer base. And I still know people who are like, I wear my Naked 2 palette every day. I wear my Naked 3 palette. So there's definitely a customer base for it to this day. They're not necessarily innovative anymore. I still think that there's enough of a customer base and that's easily accessible. I think one thing that's kind of hard to keep in mind at times is what is accessible to the masses and people who walk into an Ulta or Sephora, if it's a brand that they've known for years and it's products that they love and they stick with, I think it keeps the brand afloat. I used this deeper kind of contour shade and then I used a bit of the bronze too. I think that blended out quite nicely. I'm in this beautiful environment right now so I really just wanna do something kind of editorial and romantic. So I think I'm gonna go in with this lighter blush and just kind of put this up like and around my eye yeah so like i was saying um brands that have you know their foundations the eyebrow products the um powder the bronzer things like that i think people are going to buy a lot from and continue to buy from especially if they have something that they love so i don't think brands like Urban Decay or Too Faced or Tarte or even ABH are necessarily in trouble, even though they're not kind of producing the really exciting quality of product or even just the, the different kinds of products anymore. All right, so I brought you guys a bit closer in. My battery died and I am so hot in here right now. So hopefully my face doesn't look like it's melting off. Uh, while I was waiting for my battery to recharge, I just did my eyebrows. I used the new uh, GXVE eyebrow pencil. This is by Gwen Stefani. This is her new brand through Sephora. I actually really like this pencil. I think it's quite beautiful. It has a nice spoolie here and a really good fine point tip on the other side. And I think I got mine in shade four, which is more like an ashy, kind of like light brown, dark blonde kind of shade. Then to top it off, I use the Kosas Airbrow. Let's keep going with the face. I was trying to do this kind of uh, blush up to the side of the face. I think I'm gonna continue doing that, going back into these salt blushes. I'm gonna take this deeper one and kind of just do the edge of it. And then I think I'm gonna take one of the lighter shades and kind of put it up near the eye. I was just saying that certain brands I don't think are necessarily experiencing a downfall. Um, I think downfall might be a bit of a strong word to be completely honest. I think, you know, sometimes I know that we're like, oh, this brand is just so lame, but I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't think of one of these like really huge major beauty brands that's easily accessible to like go out of business. <laughs> just like uh, Urban Decay, I don't think that's going to be happening, even if they're releases are quite boring. I do have to say their Naked Skin Foundation and Concealer A+, still one of my favorite foundations and concealers to this day. It's like matte, but not too flat or anything, and it's not drying or cakey looking. They're such good staple face products. I'm using these creams in my crease with this dual fiber brush from e.l.f. I'm not gonna lie, I think it looks kind of cute. This like heavy blush look, I know blush is like really having a moment right now and I'm not gonna lie, I don't hate it. I do not hate it. Taking a little bit of that contour shade and kind of just deepening up the crease there. 
So what have you been liking with trends? Because again, the blush trend is very popular. I'm kind of liking the less full beat looking makeup. While I still like putting on a ton of products, I still think it's kind of cool to see like what people are doing now with all these different things. I think like whether it's very editorial, but it's not that full on a million different shades on the eye <laughs> kind of looks. I've been really enjoying more like subtle looking things or just different kind of things like this. I feel like very cottage core vibes. I'm going to use, I think this highlighter right here, this more beigey type shade. I realized I started switching up my mirrors here. These products are so pretty. I bought them so long ago and I haven't used them. And I'm so glad I'm kind of getting to now. I've been really enjoying trying these more aesthetic style videos. I just find it that it makes me really, really happy to play with this kind of stuff because I just really like it. And I find that I'm not having too many views on YouTube anymore. I'm getting a lot more traction out of TikTok right now. I could just post a really simple video and it'll have 3000 views. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to put out content on YouTube. I kind of want to just have a lot of fun with it. And this is kind of the stuff, the vibe I'm, I'm going for. So you let me know in the comments below how you're liking it. I'm going to be going into this translucent powder. This is the Mattifying Moon Dust by Cheekbone Beauty. This is from an indigenous brand that runs out of Canada. And so I really like this. This is a really nice kind of mattifying powder. And I love that the solid of it is inside this aluminum container here. It's perfect for travel and then you can refill it. The amount that I am sweating, I am trying to put as much powder on so I don't just melt all over this room right now. My goodness, summer came here in Connecticut and it just hit hard. It's like, it's either 50 degrees or like 80. And right now it's, it's pretty warm. It's a beautiful day outside, but I am sweating. Just for a little smoky something, I'm using the Pixie Hello Kitty Endless Silky Eye Pen. I'm a big fan of these Pixie Silky Eye Pens. The next thing that I'm gonna try is from Amalia. This is a brand that I tried out one of their eyeshadow palettes last year and was kind of amazed by the quality of it. This is their Unify Volumizing Mascara and I've had this for so long and I've not opened it up. So it looks like just kind of a normal, um, not normal book, almost like a pine cone type brush. What are you guys' plans for summer? Comment down below if you're doing anything. I know that a lot of travel has opened up again, especially with just all things COVID. It's so hard to kind of get back into just like the normal swing of things. I don't know about you, Chris and I have started to kind of go back into the office more. And so it's just weird. Like I got used to kind of working from home and just really enjoyed that. Okay, lengthening mascara, I see you. Wow, I only did two coats and I think that looks really good. For the last bit, we're going to try out a lipstick. I custom made this with Finding Ferdinand. They are a newer brand that I've recently become aware of and it's just the cutest little packaging. They put my initials on top and I like that if you press the button, the lipstick comes out. So I hope this color goes with everything. You can mix and match all these different bases and undertones. And so I kind of came out with a nude. And it's like a little bit pink, but not too pink. Alrighty, look at that shade. I kind of like how this all came together. It's a little different for me. I'm not used to just doing like, kind of like the editorial blown out kind of look. So this is super fun. I think I'm gonna do one more thing and that's just to add a little bit of shimmer. And I think I'm just gonna go right into that beigey highlight again and just put this on the eye. Just get like that glossy eye kind of look. Alrighty, I think that is it. I will list all the products that I use down in the description box down below. I'll also put my friend's store information too if you're interested in checking it out if you're in the area. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, comment down a little peach emoji because you are sweet as a peach. Until next time, my friends, remember to stay compassionate and chic. Mwah. Bye!